question came in and my heart goes out. My heart goes out to this person. We used Forms 6i client server. And I've had a bit of back and forth with this customer and um, they're running on Windows. So we thought about web-based forms because ultimately you've got to get off client server. But now that has gone now too. And it's true, I'll, I'll talk about that shortly. Uh, we are stuck, <laughs> what are our options? Before I get into options, for those that aren't of my uh, vintage, I thought we'd have a quick talk about forms and what it used to be. But in terms of this person's migration path, the best way of describing it is I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. But client server forms, yes, is gone. You'd be well pressed to even find the binaries uh, to find them to download. Now, the person said web-based forms is gone. That is not true. Uh, web-based forms is not gone. That is not the case at all. But it is complicated. And to explain that complication, we sort of have to go through a little bit of a tour of the evolution of forms. So here's a quick tour of forms history. Back in the day, yes, a disk would arrive. A disk would arrive and you would stick it in the machine and that's how you would install software. There's no downloads in those days. And pretty much this is how we installed Forms 4, which is what I, I started on Forms 3, but Forms 4 was the first GUI version, 4, 5, the first real proper working version, and then 5 and 6, 6i was pretty much the most robust version of Forms on client server. People were very happy with it, which is why so many people have stayed with it. And it looked like this. You ran, it was just like running something up in Windows. It was actually a Windows C Sharp or probably C++ back in those days application. As the internet suddenly blossomed into life, you know, the world was saying, well, we don't want to run around installing software on everyone's Windows PCs because Windows PCs will be a thing of the past. And of course, as we see, they're pretty much not. Most people still have them. But as we know, the reality is now the world is also very much driven by tablets and mobiles, etc. And so Oracle could sort of see this writing on the wall and said, we're going to be able to offer the same facilities, the same forms programs via a web browser. And so people will be familiar with what we used to call the old Oracle look and feel, which is sort of the rounded edges, etc. It's funny, I've just upgraded this machine to Windows 11 and it looks disturbingly similar to that Oracle look and feel that we had um, so many years ago. Once we got to sort of Forms 9, 10, 11, although you could do this with Form 6 as well, the aim was you would run Forms from within a web browser. And it would look something like this. The entire Forms effectively MDI window, the outer window, uh, would actually sitting inside a browser, in, running inside a Java applet. And people would often hide the MDI window using a bit of you know, hokery pokey to make it to be able to embed forms in other parts of web landscapes. And if you've ever used Oracle eBusiness Suite, you know, until Fusion Middleware came along, you used to see effectively uh, a combination of web pages and Oracle forms running along these lines. The way you used to run Java inside a browser was with a applet tag. And the applet you can see in blue there would reference effectively a jar file, which was effectively all the um, forms libraries needed to run in the client. And effectively you'd have you know, various parameters here about how it would look, the size of the applet, et cetera, et cetera. This applet tag was effectively used to run non, I suppose, native browser code inside the browser. And so this is how you could run Java inside the browser. And as you can imagine, as time has gone on, browsers have generally moved away from that kind of model. Probably not due to um, running Java in the browser, probably more likely due to the fact that uh, the amount of times we would get security alerts for running Flash in the browser. And as a result, over the time frames, all of a sudden, Chrome said, we're not going to run th those kind of applets in the browser anymore. It's just not going to run. So all of a sudden, Chrome could not run Forms anymore. And during this time, Chrome was rapidly becoming the dominant browser in the market. The way we recommended customers to avoid that if they couldn't get off forms um, was to, well, there's a trusted browser that you can always count on that still runs applets, and that was Internet Explorer. But even IE, come June 22, I think, June 22, IE stops. No more Internet Explorer. You have to be running Edge, and therefore that is the writing on the wall. But as I said, web-based forms is not gone. Now, that seems to be a contradiction to what I was just talking about there, the fact that browsers simply won't run it. And that's because browser-based web-based forms is gone, but web-based forms itself is not. Because we saw that the browsers were stopping the ability to run Java applets of any sort, 
uh, we introduced this thing called the Forms Standalone Launcher. And it's not particularly complicated. It's a little Java program that effectively simulates, I suppose, what the browser environment used to do. It effectively runs on your local machine, fires up a little virtual machine in which you can run your form. Now, there are some drawbacks to this because it's no longer running in a browser. It's not something that you can easily embed within other applications that run in the browser, and simply you don't get access to the integration with JavaScript running in the browser that you used to get with Forms 10 and Forms 11. Forms 10, if you're running it in the standalone Forms launcher, then it literally is much more aligned to a standalone Java program that you would run. You think like things like SQL Developer, et cetera. They're literally a Java program that runs on your desktop running the, from the standard Windows or Linux JDK. And so that's what Forms now looks like. So what are my thoughts having said all that? The first thing I would say to the customer is you can keep running Forms. You can go from Form 6i all the way up to Forms 12. It'll run in, I'll call it the web-based mode, but it's using the Form standalone launcher. That probably shouldn't be a big deal because if you're running Form 6i client server, by definition, it's a standalone facility anyway. The user experience won't change greatly. Having said that, you do need to be aware that moving from client server windows to a web-based product version means you do drop some of the things that used to be there in terms of integrating with windows form 6i used to have ole integration so you could actually talk you know to things like you could actually talk directly to things like excel and stuff like that from within the form because it was a windows app that stuff disappears there's some facilities there using a facility called web util to get access to the os but they're limited compared to what you could do in the past with a full client server product but I suppose out of all of that thing, the reality is you still end up with something that just runs on a PC. And let's face it, the vast majority of business users nowadays have demands that far surpass that. They want to be able to run it on any device, on their mobile, on the flat screen, in their Tesla, whatever. The reality is the future of, of applications is so much more diverse than just the PC. So even though you can move to Forms 12, I view that as perhaps a stopgap solution if you're running it purely in-house, then fine. But if you have users coming from vast distances or vast different platforms, et cetera, I think you probably need to start looking at how I'm going to shift maybe certain components of that onto another platform. And for me, if I was doing it, it would be Apex every day of the week. The interface for developers is I would say comparable. It's not the same, but it's comparable. There's, there's an, an easy sort of migration of, of learning skills there. But inherently, you're getting a product which is free, runs straight out of the database. You can hopefully leverage a lot of the PLC routines you may have written in forms that sit in the database straight into Apex. Um, it's still generally not a migration. It's more often than not most customers end up doing a rewrite. But that's a good thing because you're actually making that leap into the new sort of platform architectures. Mm -hmm.